Hello, Laura Donnelly here from Dancing with Ease, Body Brain Balance. And today I have another uh, broadcast of The Healing Path. The Healing Path is a series of conversations with friends and colleagues that I know either in person or from on the internet, which is really awesome that, that we can meet people all over the world and work with people all over the world um, from our own houses. So these people all work in various areas of the healing field. And the main premise of the show and the thing that we have share in common is this belief that all healing starts with an internal choice and decision for self-healing. And then whatever modality you, you use is, is amplified by that intention and by that focus in your system. And our bodies are designed to heal themselves from all kinds of crazy things. That's how we survive. So today, my guest is Elizabeth Kipp, and she is going to talk to us about holistic healing and some of the limits of traditional Western medicine that she ran into on her healing path. I'll bring Elizabeth onto the broadcast, and we'll just chat. Hey, Elizabeth. Hi, Laura. Nice to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation uh, to have a conversation with you and with your listeners. Yeah. I'm so glad that you could come and, and share because I know that you you struggled with chronic pain, which is for years before you were able to work on, find a, find a discover a methods that gave you relief. And this is a really important thing, mm. I think. Get rid of pain. I mean, really, pain is yucky. <laughs> well, we'll begin. Why don't we begin with a definition? Well, I'll say who I am first, and then we'll we'll do a definition of chronic pain. Um, Elizabeth Kipp, I'm a, a chronic pain management specialist, and yeah. I'm a yoga informed and trauma trained uh, addiction recovery coach and ancestral clearing practitioner. Uh, I also, uh, as I the yoga informed part, I'm a yoga and meditation teacher. Uh, it's all part of all the things under a chronic pain specialist support clearing chronic pain. So that's who I am. And uh, chronic pain is misunderstood by most people. They they don't understand what the definition is. You know, chronic, oh. Yeah. So chronic pain is any pain, physical, emotional, spiritual, financial, doesn't matter. The brain can't tell the difference between one kind of pain and another. It all sends the same signal. It hurts. So chronic pain is any pain that's felt 15 days out of 30 for three months or more. Wow. So I maintain anyone who's had a grief experience, uh, even if they've recovered from it, they're in recovery from chronic pain, right? Because that lasts for uh, oftentimes a grief experience lasts for three months or more. Yeah. It can last for years, actually. You know, well, if, we can't, if we can't clear it out of the system, absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I, on, so that's kind of who I am and what chronic pain is. And I'll give you a few statistics, then I'm going to take you right into uh, back up what you said about the healing path. Um, the National Institutes of Health estimates a full 25 percent of all North Americans. Uh, suffer from chronic pain, and that's across all socioeconomic measures, including children, right? So um, the World Health Organization estimates a fifth of the world suffers from chronic pain. So this is uh, what you might call a silent epidemic. And um, it's not well understood, and we'll get into that in a minute as to what that's about. Um, but I would like to read this statement that backs up what you introduced with. To heal, you need to be willing to sit with the uncomfortable. It is all part of the miraculous healing power of the body. You are releasing toxic stuff. It's going to feel strange and not exactly blissful. You can do this sitting with a therapist you can sit with your higher power. You can sit with yourself. Remember, you are not your body. Your body's in you. So feel and release. 
Do not judge what you are feeling. Just feel it. Your body will take care of whatever this uncomfortable thing is in the most magnificent way. It has extraordinary power and intelligence to use and transform it so long as we release the need to control it. We'll talk about that later. My wise friend Guru Prem Singh Khalsa said, pain is the currency of transformation. Be careful how you spend it. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. I ha- I have another friend and uh, she, she sometimes has flashbacks, which is an- another version of chronic pain mm-hmm. in your definition, right? It's, it's a recurring thing. It happens over and over. And, and she said that they changed dramatically when she started um, looking at them as information and energy. That's and right. A lot of times when I, when I work with somebody, I, I, I say, have you talked to your pain? You know, if your body hurts as a dancer, it's telling you something is out of balance. Mm-hmm. You're doing something too much or not enough or in the wrong way. And it's the pain is a signal. It's not it's not its yeah. own thing. It's not its own thing, you know. It's, a it's not out to get us. It's not out to get us, right? No, it's trying to communicate. Oh, right. my friend. Yeah, my friend Bored is here. It's so good to see you. And well, or see your name, <laughs> as the case may be. But this is really uh that's a beautiful quote. And uh, where did that come from? Oh, uh, pain is the currency of transformation. The whole thing, I wrote it. I wrote that. I wrote that. <laughs> so uh, so it's, it's uh, I wrote a book, actually, The Way Through Chronic Pain, Tools to Reclaim Your Healing Power, which is kind of the patient, sorry, the patient manual to this book by the doctor that helped me clear my chronic pain, Dr. Peter Prescott. The book is Conquer Chronic Pain, an Innovative Mind-Body Approach by Dr. Peter Prescott, who has since passed away, but I teach his book and I teach these as a pair, right? I teach these as a pair. So this is very kind of science-y doctory and I have a science background so I can interpret it pretty easily. People ask questions, well, what does he mean by that? <laughs> right? Right. And then I, then I come in with this, uh, which are the tools that I used. Um, he has some of the ones that he used in his book, which I worked. Um, I helped him write those tools, that part of the book, and, uh, and I've worked those tools because he taught me, taught them to me, and then I have more in here. So uh, there's a way through chronic pain. Uh, the problem is, from a Western science point of view, we don't really understand it. Well, um, sometimes I think people try to get rid of pain. Well, that's a problem. As opposed to understand it. Yeah, that's getting rid of is is uh, is the opposite because we're trying to push away instead of accept that it's here, and so they're moving in the wrong direction when they're trying to push it away. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a that's an error in the system when they try and do that. And I tried to do that for a long time until it, <laughs> I, I finally was like, you know what, this is not working. <laughs> let's try a let's try a different strategy, like a like a hundred per hundred and eighty percent switch that uh, direction and direction, right? So well, that's the thing too about the body, it wants to get your attention. Yes. And if you ignore it, it goes to another channel. Well, you know, it'll be bigger. If you, if like you're having headaches and you treat the headache, then maybe it moves to your back or maybe it, you know, it just will move around trying to say, wait, 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 is something important here? Well, I had, um, that's an interesting look at that it's not necessarily i mean i i i've seen chronic pain do that um mine really started emotional and i didn't realize it and journal it into physical i had an accident when i was 14 and and um i broke the fifth lumbar on my back and the 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 vertebrae slipped forward and um, pulled on the leg nerves and so it was pretty major but i got up and walked away from that accident so uh, having been grown up with no pain, no gain, I just learned at a really early age how to push through all of it. And so 
that began a pattern in my nervous system. If it hurts, it doesn't matter. Keep going, <laughs> which is not what we're talking about here, right? No. So my and challenge in 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 uh, clearing my chronic pain, I I I was able. Dr. Peter helped me actually clear it out of my system. But my challenge in my recovery, which is uh, we're over seven and a half years now. I'm over seven and a half years cleared from this. Um, my challenge is where's the line because i'll say do i'm a yoga teacher so i'll do my yoga practice and we're we want to kind of uh, test the nervous system and push it just a little bit to to get it make it resilient and build capacity and so um for me it's like well where's the line between um building capacity and actual damage. And I can't tell the difference until I'm way over the line based on my old programming of no pain, no gain. You just push through all of it, right? It's an old habit. Yeah. Well, it's a really, really important thing <clears throat> because because like I, I came up with teaching dancing, the same thing, right? No, mm -hmm. no pain, no gain. Well, that doesn't really hurt. Somebody said to you, well, that doesn't really hurt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Okay, this feels bad, but it doesn't hurt. Okay, <laughs> you know, and and you do internalize these messages, and and at the same time, when you're building muscle capacity, like you said, part of that building is to to break down the tissue and have the tissue rebuild. Mm -hmm. And um, same thing like with stretching. There's a good stretch and a bad stretch, and then a lot of this for me requires. Um, I want to say the getting in touch with your body a different way. Really learning to listen to your body's messages. And you know, is this a tweak? Is, is this bone on bone? Is this just a little muscle strain because I picked up too many bags of potatoes yesterday or something? Or like you said, you know, your, your back slipped out and your body adjusted to having that bone in the wrong place. And that became normal. And that's another problem with injury. Well, it was very, it was painful, but I just ignored the signal is what yeah. happened. And it wasn't until uh, seven years later that I got with a chiropractor and he's like, oh, you have an old injury. I'm like, oh, I, I know what that was. And, <laughs> and, uh, and he helped me for a while. And then, um, then I need surgery. And I had like three surgeries to stabilize that because they were concerned that it would just keep slipping because it was moving forward into the pelvis. It's like 80% slipped into the pelvis now. And it's pulling the leg nerves with it because of its location. So it's stable now. But um, the surgery, and I'll get into this. This is why I wanted to talk to you and, and, and present this part of my argument. I talk about it in the book a little bit. But um, I just, it just made me, I just had more pain. And then they started me on uh, uh, opiates and benzodiazepines, which is for anti-anxiety and, and uh, to help me cope because that was their only uh, solution. Um, and they, they, I'll get into it a little bit. They made an error because uh, until I do met Dr. Peter, which was many years later, um, 32 years later, um, they made an error because they their the information they had, the Western doctors that I worked with, and I worked with lots of them all over the place um, in, in, in Canada, here, around the world. Um, they assumed I wouldn't get better. They said, yeah. They said this is the best we've got. The opiates and benzos. This is this this will give you the best quality of life that we can give you. You're not going to get better. And I was like, I'm a scientist, and and I and I and I've learned that the experts know their area. I know my area, I, and I kind of know within my area what I know and what I don't know. So that's kind of a a, a thing that we learn. Um, but that's an error in the system uh, on the part of these people because uh, they're not fortune tellers and they've forgotten their basic science, uh, which is <clears throat> science works on probabilities, not facts. It's probable that. 
not yes and no. It doesn't work like that. That's not what science is, right? So that's kind of fundamental uh, misunderstanding when they when they said you will because they can't say that. That's not honest. That's not actual real science, right? And they don't want to say the real science, which is well, in in our history, this is challenging, and we haven't seen someone get better. We don't know how you will get better, but we don't know that you won't get better. Yeah, they didn't say that. So that's so, a scary yeah. thing for a doctor to say, I think. In well, I, 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 when I was trained uh, as a scientist, I was trained to be honest and be rigorously honest. So I, you know, anyway, it's just the way that I kind of came, come to the game. Here's the other thing. Science can only talk about, comment on things that it can observe, measure, and describe. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Anything yeah. else that they cannot comment on other than to say, I have no comment. That's how it works, right? So here's the thing. Where do we live? We live in the all it is. It includes the science framework and everywhere else. We live in the all it is, right? Where does healing happen? It happens everywhere, including the scientific framework and beyond it. So just because science hasn't figured out how things work doesn't mean that, that how to heal X, Y, Z doesn't mean it can't heal. You see that? It's really important to understand. It's a fundamental understanding. Yeah, it, I get it. I get it. And I love yeah. it. I mean, it's where I live, right? In, in yeah. My whole self is... There's so much mystery just inside our own individual bodies. Yeah. yeah. And, and your body and my body, we might have some similar things. I mean, they might look exactly the same from the outside. You know, we have heads and we have eyes and we have arms and everything like that. But, but internally, we are like two different ecologies. And how can the, how, I mean, the doctor has to be really, what do I want to say? Open to look at how maybe even the same medicine affects you as it might affect me. Yeah, so the conundrum of, of chronic pain, uh, you're speaking right to my next point. <laughs> conundrum of chronic pain from the Western doctor point of view is a result of the reductionist thinking. Ah. So uh, uh, traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine and Native American medicine and lots of other medical models except Western models, Western science, the Western medical model, all look at the mind, body, spirit system as one thing. They're not separate. Can't separate mind, body, and spirit. What happens to one happens to all of them, all of those, right? In the Western science world, it's this rejectionist view. And they're like, so the first thing that a Western doctor would look to me, they would look at my x-rays. Oh, you have this thing in your back. And that's, that's their, you got to start somewhere with, with, in a science problem. I get that, right? I get that. Here's the problem with chronic pain. You could have three people with my x-rays, three different people with, with, with x-rays that look just like mine. And you would have three different results. One would have pain all the time. The other would have pain only when they're stressed. And the other wouldn't have any symptoms at all. Now, how do you explain that? Right? How do you explain that? You can't explain that from a reductionist point of view. Because the x-rays look the same. So the thing that's happening right at that point where they're looking is the same. Now, but there's something different. Right. So my question when I sit in front of a doctor and I have Western doctors on my team, right? I have, they, they're wonderful. I'm not, I'm not dissing that, but I am saying, what is your perspective? So I'm very careful to, 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 to know what is the perspective the doctor or healthcare worker that's sitting across from me is using to view my problem. Is it holistic? Is it reductionist? And, 
And what are the limitations in each one of those perspectives? Because it's all limited. There's all limited, right? They're all, there's all, all kinds of limited. We can talk about this, but we can't talk about that, that kind of stuff. It's hard to have that conversation, really. Doctors don't have that much time, really. But my job as as a as a as a as a chronic pain coach, right? As a as a person that that works in this area and helps other people deal with this stuff, I'm not like a doctor or a therapist, but I sure do I sure know the area, right? My job is to shed some light on this stuff and to help people understand what's really happening with chronic pain. The brain is changed by chronic pain. So uh, we need to bring changes that heal. Sorry, we bring need to bring modalities that heal those changes, right? And the kinds of changes and anybody who's a chronic pain person here. Hi, Kathleen. Nice to see you. Um, anyone here that uh, uh, knows chronic pain will recognize these symptoms. One, brain fog. I can't think straight. Oh, I don't remember this and I forgot that and my short-term memory is not very good. That's a symptom. Another symptom is um, negative and increased negativity. We have a slight negative bias anything, any t- anyway, like when we see something new in our environment, our first tendency is to say no, right? Because it keeps us safe. When we come up against the unknown, we, we do this hesitation to keep us safe. But in chronic pain, that negativity really ramps up. And so we have this very negative, you know, you did this and you did that, or I did this and I, and it, it can turn right into us. So we, we have a very, um, we have a very shadowy, dark existence when chronic pain comes in and, and, and it steals our attention away is what it does. And so we have to bring modalities in that heal those changes and, and keeps uh, chronic pain from stealing our attention away. Right. And that's what I work on. Yeah. Well, I, I knew we would have, I'm, I'm sure we could talk for like five hours. I'm sure we could talk for five hours. But, but one of the things that, that, that I wanted to touch back on is this idea that there is not a separation. And you, and you said it at the very beginning that chronic pain can be emotional pain, physical pain, spiritual pain, mm-hmm. or, or mental pain, thinking. I, I mean, a lot of the work I do has to do with what happens when you think a certain thing. Mm-hmm. And like for your doctors, when they say to you, well, you're never going to get better. What happens to a person when someone they trust in authority says that? Mm-hmm. You know, if somebody says to me, I don't know how you're going to get better, but let's start to explore. I have a, my whole thing has a different response my whole thing, right? The whole thing that's connected. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And, and so a lot of the, of the thing that, that I, I work on too is, is reattention, changing your attention. Because in this system, if, if you bring a sense of ease or healing, calmness or peace to any part of it, it trickles through all the rest of it. Well, then the body can heal. When we come to that place where we're accepting the moment and we, we find some ease um, or we find, let me put it this way, in chronic pain, ease is, is a few steps down the road. But uh, the, the idea is to accept that this is what I'm feeling in this moment. And within that, you can find some ease and then healing can start taking place. Right. Is that what you mean? Yeah, that pressure against something. Well, I, actually, I often talk about it like dancing. When you want to jump, you push down on the floor and the floor pushes back, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's because you want to jump. So you wanted to get higher. So the harder you push down, the harder the floor pushes back and the higher you mm-hmm. jump. But if you want rid of an idea and you push against it, then it's going to push back and get stronger. So that pain when you block it is really really adds to it and it's hard not to tense up against it it really is hard i tell this story on myself all the time i had a bad headache one time and and i was whining <laughs> like you said the negativity right i'm a, i feel so bad I hurt, my head hurts so bad and you know and my husband is passes through the room and he says don't you have something you can do about that <laughs> 
And and I'm like, I'm laughing. I said, okay, I have to do my own medicine, right? And this mm-hmm. is a lot what you're talking about is you have to make that choice, right? That that you're gonna look at this differently from a different point of view. Mm-hmm. And then what I did is is between the throbs, I discovered there was space between the throbs where I didn't have a headache. Mm-hmm. It wasn't very big, but when I when I stopped repeating the litany of how bad my head hurt, I could discover something else in there. And I, th- I think that um, mm-hmm. looking, looking at, at our, uh, I was thinking too, uh, that, that do you coach people who um, have chronic pain? And as Kathleen has just said, it, it's so easy to get negative when you're in pain. And it, and it yeah. really is. Mm-hmm. It takes so much energy just to get, you know, keep going through the pain, which is what, what we're taught to do. Well, there's mostly we're taught. That's actually not what we're taught. Really? <laughs> Taught, and not what the people around me were taught. They were taught that as soon as we got a bump and ah, you know, we did that, the adults rushed right over to try and like stop the pain. So like, you know, put a Band-Aid on it, give you a pill, you know, give you a shot, whatever it was to stop the pain. So I learned pain is bad. Oh, Interesting deal with pain at all costs, whatever you have to do to cover it up. There was no accept it. There was none of that other than, so that's one message when somebody gets physically injured, if they admit that they're physically injured, I had to get knocked down and out <laughs> in, order, in order for that to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, I broke my toe, but it doesn't you know, like a flash or a break, or you you know you've got a cut that they can that they can see. They rush over right, and they make this big thing about it. So, um, and I'm not saying we shouldn't attend to our children and their wounds. I'm not saying that. I'm saying what kind of energy are you putting into it? Are you making them? Are you so scared that you're making them scared of their experience? Uh, are they are they learning that it's a bad thing to be it's something to be afraid of and that that their body is their enemy rather than the the miraculous and then attending to the miraculous power within the body to heal when there's an accident you see what i'm saying it's like point of view. perspective yeah yeah it's it's so important the point of view and yeah I, um Also, I use gratitude, by the way. One of the things, I mean, I, I've got kind of a list of things that I do to help people uh, have a different pain experience. But one of them is, what's the blessing in this moment? What's the blessing? And, you know, listen, when I was in chronic pain, uh, I, I have kind of a thing around gratitude. I kind of came in with that. However, there were moments when if somebody said, what's the blessing in this moment? I would have said, get the hell out of here. <laughs> You know? I got you. I, got you. Not today. I don't feel like it today. I was like, get away from me with that, you know. So I I understand because we 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 take pain we take pain pain personally. I, I wrote a blog about the the the, the nine P's of 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 uh, dealing with chronic pain, and like one of them is we take it personally. We think it's progressive. We think it's permanent. I mean, it's, this is all kind of P words around around what we do with 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 our with our chronic pain. Um, we refer to the past. Um, it's a it's a it, and we think it's persistent. Uh, it, 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 so lots of P words and and um, and and notice all those words revolve around the judgment and meaning I'm making about the pain. I'm not just identifying it as, as a sensation, as they like just said earlier, as information coming into the system. That's not the perspective I'm coming in from. I'm coming in from judgment. It's bad. And these are all the P words that describe how bad it is. <laughs> but it's what we do, right? Well, it is. It is. And, um, and it's so important. Okay, there's several. I got, my brain is just like firing at 90 miles an hour. <laughs> it's really important to like, like I was a teacher teaching dance. And so I tried not to do 
the abusive things that people had done to me in my kitchen, mm -hmm. you know? And so like, if, like I had a teacher and she's like, you know, you can't put any padding on your toes when you dance on point. Well, I would get blisters instantly. And then I couldn't dance because I'm, that's just, eh. so like I said to my kids, figure out what works and put that in your shoes, whatever works so that you can dance. Because if you're hurt, you can't dance. So there's, so there's that. And then there is, what is there? There's discomfort which is I think what we were talking about earlier about with yogurt, where is that line? What is the discomfort of pushing the edge and building mm -hmm. without going over the edge and damaging? Mm -hmm. And so- So and not enough, not enough, uh, not enough we atrophy. Too much we injure, there's injury, right? So we have to find that that happy balance. And, and I'll just add here to Kathleen's point, it's really important. Um, it's why the chronic pain work has to be done. Anybody who's a chronic pain patient who's in recovery from it has to use the tools every day. Negativity is like, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, sticky in the brain. It's like Velcro. It's sticky in the brain. Positive thoughts. This is why affirmation, affirmation positive affirmations really don't work. Uh, they're like, uh, Teflon in the brain. They just slide right off, right? So negative thought, negativity, uh, um, <clears throat> Velcro, positivity, Teflon. Now, I heard that and I, because that's neuroscience thing. And I'm like, what's the evolutionary edge on that one? Because that, that's got to be wired into the system somehow, right? That's kind of where I go. And I was like, oh, because that helps us keep safe in the world. Right. If we remember the negative stuff, then we know not to go there next time. So um, when we're working in chronic pain or we're, we're trying to change the system to uh, put a more neutral spin on our experience, we're actually working against our bio basic biology, which wants to accentuate the negative. So it's why we have to do the work every day. Meditation is a huge part of it. Meditation is one of the great places to heal that chaos in the brain that the chronic pain creates. So that's one of the reasons I'm a teacher in that, right? That's one of the things I, one of the many things I teach. Yeah, because it helps us. But I have to meditate every day. I did this morning. I do a morning practice every morning. I sit down and I do meditation. Yeah. So it's a practice. Yeah, that's right. And, and healing is a practice, you know, I mean, I, and I call it the healing path because you're on it and you're journeying on it because, and there can be many healing events on the healing path, <laughs> but, but there isn't one major event. It's, it's not a once and done because like you said, our mind is going to slip back to those negative patterns. It goes into its old programming, the original conditioning, those first seven years that lays down some some conditioning that's that's pretty hard, but it's pretty um, set in the system. So we have to work. Um, we have to work on a consistent uh, basis to rewire that. It's possible because I've done it. I'm still doing it. I'm still working on it. Right. Yeah. And isn't it fun? I mean, for me, this is part of the, you know, people sometimes say to me, well, I'm bored. And I'm like, do you have a body? They go, well, yeah. I said, how can you be bored? Doesn't your body change every day? Isn't something happening in your body right now? Well, boredom is actually a gateway. Oh, cool. How? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've, I get this a lot. I get this. Oh, I've been breathing. I'm, I'm bored with breathing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so what is what is boredom? Let's 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 take a look at that and what it is. It's a place that we're not comfortable with. I'm bored. It's this is a bad place to be. I need excitement. So that's an addiction all by itself to impact. We're looking for impact. We're looking for impact. So this is why I work with addiction because chronic pain has its own addictive stuff. We're not getting a dopamine hit with chronic pain. It's not like that, but we're getting the same uh, signal. Those that negativity sets off a um, an addictive pattern in the brain. So um, 
we need to, uh, this is why I bring this stuff in. And so um, <clears throat> we're, we're, we're having to be very aware of um, what patterns are running and how we're, how we're approaching it and what meaning we're making out of these things. Yeah, it's true. The other thing I was going to say is, is like it, it seems to me like if you were working with somebody, you would be able to help them to ask the right questions to their doctor when they went to their doctor. Yeah. To advocate for a more holistic uh, mm -hmm. idea or incorporation. And, and um, my mom, a long time ago, she had cancer in the 80s. And it was a time when you just believed everything the doctor said, you know, and, and I went with her and she was sick, right? She couldn't do this for herself. I understand. This is part of the, the thing with uh, somebody in chronic pain too. I, I believe they need, they need help and an advocate, somebody to listen to the doctor, maybe make notes. Now, now you could record it on your little voice message if the doctor would agree to that. But when you're in pain, you, you, you can't even remember all the steps that they say no. might be good for you. You don't have uh, access to your executive function if you're back in if you're in the back part of the brain in fear, right? If you're if you're your fight flight uh, fawn or 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 uh, fawn or freeze is going off, that's in the amygdala. You don't even have access to executive functioning to think about. It's too difficult. Yeah, I agree. I haven't actually done that, been and gone with a chronic pain patient and to a doctor's appointment, but I have talked to them prior to an appointment and helped them. These are the questions that I'd ask based on your condition. Yes. And I've been in front of doctors before. And, and I, again, Dr. Peter was amazing. And there are amazing doctors out there. Another one who's, who's quite, uh, quite fabulous with chronic pain is Dr. Joe Dispenza. And you can look him up on YouTube. He's amazing. He, he, he did a lot of rebuilding. He did a very sim similar rebuilding to what I did, what Dr. Peter took me through very similar. So um, there's, there's doctors out there. It's just that chronic pain is really taught as a thing. And um, hopefully it, it, they'll start to change that in medical school, but at, at the moment it's not really taught. And and I think I think the medical world um, and big pharma are 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 really scrambling for drugs to that something that's not an opiate that will help uh, will help uh, uh, pain patients, especially the chronic. And you know, you, you, if you look, if you look now, I haven't found it. Uh, it's not like I can see every piece of research that's out there, but I have looked, and I haven't actually seen any study that says that opiates help heal chronic pain. I haven't seen that. Well, also what I have talked to people and and, um, and one of the things they say is, is that the opiate doesn't even really address the pain. It makes you just not care. That's right. Well, there's a whole bunch of things that it does, right? You're right. It does that. It also, um, <laughs> it dehydrates us. Oh, that's terrible. So that the body's not getting the water that it needs, right? Uh, it paralyzes the, the gut so that when we eat food, we can't digest it properly. And we can't eliminate it. So then we've got sewage back up in the system. I know I did this for years. It causes more pain, right? Uh, of course, yes. Yeah. So a ripping... Yeah. Then they increase pain medicine because you have more pain. So yeah, a rip-roaring case of irritable bowel syndrome. And then the other thing is it just, it depresses the a respiratory system. So uh, you're not getting, you're not able to oxygenate the cells properly and you're not able to clear the, the toxins that build up. 70% of the toxins in our system are exhaled through the breath. And when you can't breathe properly, they're sitting in the base of the lung, just sitting there polluting the system. Right. So, Tell me, please, how any of that is helpful when a body's trying to heal. Right. I don't see it. No. I now, agree. I don't understand using an opiate under this, because I've had a, like a kidney stone. I had a four centimeter, four, sorry, four millimeter kidney stone. And I was really glad to get a shot of dilaudid, let me tell you. 
<laughs> I was really happy to have that uh, for that moment, right? Until we were able to deal with the with the kidney stone. Uh, it was just a moment uh, while that thing was was trying to move through my system that was just epically, insanely painful. But uh, when you're that stressed out, that that the body's super stressed, that's what opiates are for, right? Intense pain from a that's right isolated episode. That's right. Yeah, not chronic meditation for a chronic situation, which is is possibly a chronic cry for help. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Your- I just think I just think it's important that we look at the. We're careful about the perspective that um, we're looking through. The what we're how are we looking at the problem, and um, so anyway, that's that's my story. I think it's an important message to get across to people, and I really appreciate that you um, that you allowed me the time and the platform to to bring it forward. Oh, I just oh, Kathleen made a comment. She had to take them for a short time after recent. Yeah, they do take the edge off, but but at the at the expense of the the body's ability to heal. So, uh, like I I broke my arm four years ago. I broke it up here. It busted into seven pieces here. Blew out the wrist and the hand. Lower part of the hand blew out, and I, and they gave me um, they gave me uh, uh, opiates. That, that I was cut like, do I really need them? They said, you know, if you don't take them now. And walk out of this place with them, or you can't come back and get a script later. <laughs> I was like, okay. So it's kind of like a little bit of a threat there. But I, I went ahead and took the script and filled it. And, and uh, but I never used it. Uh, I just went into meditation. And I'm not saying like that. That's what everybody should do. I'm just saying I was able to deal with that. Um, it was exhausting. Yes, but- because of that. Because to do it with meditation. It, yeah. This is this coming back and coming back. Yeah, that's and right. Coming back. Yeah. And, and you're right. Everybody has to make it make a certain make their own decision. Yep. Yeah. Where where's the line? And I had that bottle in the in my bathroom in case I I I, I needed that help. So I I get it. I just uh, with the history that I had, I was just like, yeah, you wanna you wanna go back and 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 into the dragons den again. Girl, you want to really try that? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna try not to do that this well, time. <laughs> and by this time, you had healed from a number of things, and you knew how your body was working. I did and see, and for my myself, the the thing I know about my system is I need an anti-inflammatory. When something is off, I need to reduce the inflammation mm-hmm. so everything can move. The blood can move through the muscles. The, the joints can just be, you know, not, I don't push them, no pushing, but just let them move gently. That works for me. It's not going to work for everybody, but I know that works for me. Mm-hmm. And so, so again, this is le- learning about our own system listening to our own system, working with our own system in a way that promotes it to healing. And my uncle won't take op- opiates because they give him hallucinations. And he said he would rather have the pain than the hallucinations. Yeah, yeah. I, that's what happens to me when I get codeine. I start, you know, it's it's kind of all over. So I, I not only, um, when I was taking opiates, I was like, I can take this one and this one and this one, but don't give me anything else because all of those do this, 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 and this to me. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was like that, you know. It was, yeah. it was, uh, it was like that. And I, and I also wouldn't, I refused to take any opiate that made me high. I was like, yeah, I'm not going there. But I still got addicted. I still had, I still had, uh, I still got in that trap, and and. Uh, and the other thing that I'll say about opiates that I didn't mention, I, I gave you the list, but I'm going to give you one more. Um, uh, when you take them um, more than, say, what Kathleen is taking, which is for a few days, um, for a short time, when you take them more than that, um, you can develop something called hyperalgesia, which is uh, the pain medicine itself will cause pain. And that was part of my problem. Oh, wow. Yeah, that was part of my problem was was uh, 
Uh, I, I had a, a, a number of problems that a number of things that were feeding into my chronic pain experience. Uh, that was one of them. It wasn't the only one. Inflammation was another one. I had a very, I have a very, uh, very, very sensitive uh, inflammatory response. So I had to really change my diet, <laughs> really change my diet. And I had to make sure that I'm getting enough uh, fluid. Right. So an, uh, it, it, the recommended uh, amount of uh, water used to be uh, used to be a half an ounce of water per pound of body weight. And then uh, Dr. Philip Gullio, who's one of my uh, was one of my doctors uh, and um, uh, did a study with Duke University and they studied uh, uh, Olympic athletes. And what they did was they doubled the dose to one ounce of water per pound of body weight and saw what happened. And this is what happened. The athletes either didn't get injured or when they did, they healed much faster. And I was like, wow, that's really interesting as, as somebody interested in healing. I'm, that's amazing. So we are like, we're, we're like 60 to 70% water, depending on whose reference you, you use. Um, so it's important that we stay hydrated on a regular basis. And I tried it myself. I'm like, okay. Um, and and I, I end up having to uh, relieve myself more often during the day, but I feel so much better. It's like, it's like, wow, I didn't even know it could be like this. Yeah. Right. So another important piece of, of um, uh, uh, making sure that we're, we're really feeding, watering, and resting the body. I love that. Feeding, watering, and resting. And then making sure that we're saying the right things to it. Like we need to talk to it and we need to listen to it, right? We need, what are we saying to ourselves and how much of the, te how much of the Teflon is, is around and how much of the Velcro is around and how are we, how are we dealing with our old conditioning that tells us this is how things are supposed, this is how things are. And we need to question those and say, really, that that's just an old belief. I don't need to push through. I can. There's a way I can do this. I can take my yoga class, or I can, I can, uh, you know, go and walk into my day without having to push, push, push my way through. It's okay to breathe and have some ease in life as you move through. Yep, yeah. yep, yeah. I think so. And there are links in the description for people who would like to get in touch with Elizabeth. Uh, if you have questions or comments in the Healing Path, uh, private group is is private. And so you can ask a more private question than like on my profile page because maybe you don't want to ask a personal question there. Um, the video will be up and Elizabeth is around online. I'm sure that and her book is available. And thank you for coming. Boris and Kathleen and anybody else who was watching, we appreciate that. And I'll be back on the healing path again the next time somebody says, this day works for me because, because part of my healing is to listen to my intuition. And narrowing things down in channels doesn't work for me. So this was the day Elizabeth was available and I was really happy. So thank you so much, Elizabeth, for coming. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you, uh, Borat and Kathleen and anyone else who, who's there. Right. Take good care, everybody, and we'll see you next time. Hmm.